Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today I have a tutorial for you on how to paint gold jewelry. Yeah, it can be really difficult to get the right amount of like contrast and pop and darks and lights and everything to really make jewelry, gold, silver, that kind of thing really pop and shine. And the first time I did it was probably about 10 years ago or something. It was for a a school project and I remember it was kind of a learning curve until I realized how to really just boom get in there and get those highlights and make those things beam so anyways I'm working on this wonderful collaborative piece with this lovely lady named Shauna who takes incredible self portraits um, she's at the illustrator I'll link to her down below but this is a collaborative piece I'm doing with her and she has all of these amazing jewels so I thought what a better chance for me to share with my lovely YouTube family just how to make that gold shine so anyways I hope you learned a little something today. If you do, pop that subscribe button and make sure you come back over and over again and it really helps me grow my channel. Thanks guys, I hope you learned something. We will begin our gold painting with a very simple palette. Now remember, gold is warm, so all of our mixes are going to be very warm. I don't have any blues or greens in this at all. I'm going to start with my Naples yellow and ochre because what you want is some really yellowish yellows and orangey oranges, but that doesn't look like something that you pulled out of a Crayola box. You want yellows and oranges that are slightly muted, but still quite bold. And look at this, how everything looks like one variation of the same color. I'm not going to be adding any blues or purples. As I said, I don't want variations such as I would with a skin tone. I want everything to stay pretty much on the spectrum of yellow to orange. And now if you notice, they are quite bold each tone. There's not a lot of slight variation and that is because gold and silver, the shine uses a lot of contrast. So within our tones, we want them to be nicely contrasted. Now remember that even painting complicated things such as jewelry or facial features or hair or any of the things that can sort of flummox a painter, just remember that all you are doing is painting what you see. Try not to think about what you are painting as far as objects, but more so as far as tonal variations, shapes, and light and darks. Once you start thinking that, then you allow your subject to tell you what to paint versus you telling your subject what to paint. And what I mean by this is it is very easy to have an idea in your mind about what something is supposed to look like. And that idea can contrast what you may see on the photograph or reference in front of you. However, it is much better to paint exactly as you see your reference rather than trying to quote, tell your reference how it is supposed to look. When I was first painting this ring in particular, the strange shadow shapes on the front of it, as well as the bright highlight just around the back, kind of confused me a little bit. I felt like it was a little bit too shiny to be in such low light, but I stuck with it. I did what the photograph told me to do. And by the end, I think it turned out quite well. When painting a ring or other piece of jewelry that is quite smooth and or bulbous that has less filigree and indentations, you still want to make sure that you are laying down the paint in nice, highly contrasted arrangements rather than hyper blended. And if you take a look at any gold or silver object, you will notice that they have very bright streaks and very dark streaks right next to each other that are almost not blended together at all, very, very slightly. And this is the key to making your jewelry, gold, silver, whatever, pop in your paintings. 
do not over blend and do not shy away from those super bright brights directly next to those super dark darks. Normally when we see something so bright next to something so dark, that is an indication in your mind of an edge. However, because gold objects tend to bring a bit of a curved angle to those high contrasted areas, our mind reads it as more of a shine than as a drop off. It's kind of amazing the way our brain knows how to read things, even though technically on a painting, everything is basically the same flat surface and materials. Unfortunately, my recording messed up during the painting of that particular ring, but I just wanted to briefly touch on it. It's actually very simple the way I did it. It was literally a series of dots. Because this is a ring with a few set jewels in it and a lot of filigree, I put in the darker areas underneath and then literally just dotted on top where the medium tones were, the jewels were, and then the very brightest highlights up top. I did no blending whatsoever in this ring, just a series of dark to light dots where I saw the highlights coming in. And now this last ring is a perfect blending of the two, as it is a cuff along with filigree in the middle. Now, always you want to make sure that your shape remains round, of course, and you know that things that are farther away from the eye are darker and things that are closer to the eye are brighter. So keep that in mind as you're doing the solid round band around the finger, but then don't forget to add in your darks and lights as a series of dots or small marks without doing too much blending. That's going to help keep a nice high contrast as well as making sure that your highlights are beaming from the low lights. If you're curious about the specific brushes and paints that I use today, check down below. I've got them all listed out. And if you make any purchases through my special links, then it helps to support my channel. And I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. I love having you every single time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.